Welcome to Ritzgar Model Fix and something a little different this time we're going to be looking at Valum's BNT2 Turbine Islander in RAF markings in 148 scale so this is not a mainstream production kit it's a bit more of a limited run type but nonetheless an interesting subject quite a large kit in 48th so let's take a look round the box top tour some delightful artwork there on the box top um, depicting an islander probably over Northern Ireland somewhere Having a look round the box, we've got multilingual blurb just saying the construction kit contains a complete plastic model, resin parts, photo etch parts, decal sheet, instruction book, glue and paint are not included and it's recommended for modellers 15 and over. Kit number for this one is 48012. Box end is quite a simple affair. Valum logo, title and a repetition of the box art. On the other side, just got uh, Valum's address there. And this kit is distributed by Dave Coley's Emporium.co.uk. Purchased this off eBay. Fantastic service and lightning quick delivery. So with the box top tour out of the way, let's take a look at the contents. So I've never never had a Valum kit before, so but it's a subject that uh, I quite like. So as we can see, we've got uh, a single bag. More than that later. We've got some instruction booklets. So looking at the instruction books, uh, it looks to be well printed. We've got brief synopsis of the type in multilingual format and some operational data there such as maximum speed etc. Opening the booklet we've got paint diagram for two of the marking options included which is ZF573 or ZH536. And opposite we have the sort of basically sketched out sprue parts map. Um, these are numbered so I'm going to assume that in the kit they're not so we'll have to have a look and check, but you're going to have to just make sure that you're getting the correct parts off the sprues there through assembly. Parts map is continued on the other page. And we've got the cabin floor, two bladed props that aren't going to be used in this kit. Decal sheet, vacuum formed clear parts for the cabin windows in this variant. Normal clear parts film for the instrumentation and two little metal frets. Turning the page sees the assembly sequence start with the instrumentation and the instrument panel, the cockpit. So we've got the combing, basic part layout sort of sandwiched together with the film and the photo etch with the control yokes going in and some photo etch levers. So that's going to be quite a nice detailed cockpit there. Harnesses are provided for the rather basic seats with some overhead switch gear in the fuselage sides. Assembly then turns to the undercarriage, the fixed undercarriage of this, with this aircraft for the wings. Photo etch for the scissor links which is a nice touch both on the nose gear and the main gear there. Next up we've got the three blade prop of this type and the nasal being built up with some radiator detail and some nice little pointers there saying it needs to sit 3mm back. Then we're on with construction of the interior, so you get rudder pedals, rear bulkhead and crew seats. Seat belts are provided. More internal detail. Nice to see that the canopy window, the cockpit cabin windows can be inserted from behind. Be interesting and we're going to need some careful cutting out of these vacuum par uh, form parts to fit. And the canopy glass, cockpit glass going in uh, as well. Section 6 sees the wing, which is in two parts, being joined to the top of the cabin roof. Nacelles and wing tips going on. And again, some careful measurement and diagrams there showing where you've got to cut out to uh, put the parts in for this, this type. At 7, focuses on the undersurface and the addition of those nacelles and exhausts. 
nose gear wheel etc going on sort of anti strike plate at the back section 8 uh, some more plastic parts uh, are being added to the belly along with a pitot tube and then section 9 is a whole host of photo etch parts that make up the strengthening plates and plates underneath last but not least on stage 10 we've got all the aerials and some more photo etch parts just to make up the upper surface aerials so they're going to be quite interesting <laughs> they're just going to be knocked off during the build so it's probably going to be best to just to check the fit and add those at the end and then we've got the last marking guide which is ZH537 there to complete the instruction booklet so everything's in one bag we've got two colours of plastic there Let's have a look at the way in. It is a sticky sealed bag, so we'll open that. Let's remove, carefully remove the contents, and let's have a look at what we've uh, got inside. So we'll have a look at those in a second. So we've got grey spray which has got the prop blades on there's a little bit of flash but bear in mind this is a limited run kit so it's not a mainstream kit we've got no location pin but we have got some helpful details in there in terms of left and right just going to need a little bit of care cleaning everything up before it fits but details quite nice parts are a bit greasy So as you can see it's quite a large model in 48 scale and I'm just looking at the upper surface of these wings and there's some quite nice detail rendered on there. So that's going to look quite nice under some paint I think. Quite optimistic. Got a lot of the smaller details, instrument panel and the seats and bulkheads are all quite nicely moulded. There's not much in the way of flash. There's got a few pin marks that are going to perhaps just need a little bit of uh, investigation as to whether they're going to interfere with the fit of the wings together but they're easy enough to just sand out and then we've got this uh, I think this is the lower section of the wing which is again quite nicely rendered some nice rivet detail on there if the camera can pick that up the next sprue has the elevators and tail planes and again quite basic in their design and you've got the two blade props there for the, the normal Islander and the nasals should you wish to build one that's not in, in the box bit of flash creeping in around there but nothing major but these ejector pin towers are going to need removing because they will interfere with the fit of the parts but again it's a limited run kit so a little bit more work involved in assembly but just basic modelling skills I'll see you through that the last sprue, quite a large one, we've got the upper surface of the tail planes, wheels, which are adequate, basic but adequate, and we've got the fuselage halves, which are really quite well rendered again, so there's, it's going to look quite impressive this I think when it's built up, again no location pins, so careful dry fitting and making sure that you're happy with the fit of the parts before you go anywhere near this with glue. There is some lovely raised surface detail on there as well. So, uh, quite an interesting subject. Play up spray. Put those cabin windows and a door, so it'd be nice to uh, pose that open, I think. Framework's quite well raised. So, uh, it should be easy to mask. They're not perfectly clear. There is a bit of texture in them. But nothing that a dip in clear won't uh, alleviate little vacuum formed sheet with the bulge blister windows for the cabin doors found on the RAF type so decals look to be a little bit iffy they're out of register and you can see the pink 
with the round dull red slightly offset there in this example but I'm sure I can find some of the correct size again the walkways look a little bit to be overscaled perhaps a bit thick no stenciling data provided and um, we have got the, the white surrounds for the windows I don't know if the camera can pick those up there and there's that film for the instrument panel so we might have to be looking at uh, alternative source of markings but in all fairness we only need the serial number which we could probably get away with and some alternative uh, modern roundels there for the markings which I'm sure I can find from the spares box a couple of etch frets I'm not going to get those out but uh, we've got some wing fences and other details there and all those plates that go on the undersurface so there we have Valum's 148 scale BNT2 turbine Islander in RAF markings. I'm really pleased with the contents of the kit. Uh, not having bought a Valum kit before or seen a Valum kit before, I certainly think there's going to be a little bit more work involved than perhaps a mainstream scale model. But then none of the mainstream manufacturers would probably ever dream of doing an Islander in 48th. So it'll be interesting to see how the build progresses. So look out for a future video build here on Rick Scale Model Fix. So until next time, please everybody look after yourselves, stay well and take care.